All right, good evening. Uh, I'm getting some feedback. Can somebody turn their microphone off? Councillor, yeah, there we go. Uh, okay, good evening. And uh, we'll start the, uh, I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, for attendance purposes, I see Councillor uh, Kelly's absent and Councillor McCaw is uh, filling in. Um, any disclosure of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof? Councillor McCaw. Thank you. I believe it's 7.2 of this meeting, 6.1 of the next. Um, that's 40 omens. That's correct. 7.2. Yes. Okay. All right. Noted. I just got some opening remarks. Um, <clears throat> The planning or the public meeting is being heard by the City Council Planning Advisory Committee and the public notice has been given in accordance with the Planning Act. The non-elected members of the Planning Advisory Committee are Mr. John Beltudis, Mr. David Joyce, Ms. Catherine Brown and Mr. Paul Jennings. Citizen appointees may ask questions and participate in the discussion in order to assist in making recommendations to City Council, but may not make motions or vote in connection with the public meeting. If a person or, or, or public body does not make an oral submission at the public meeting or make written submissions to the planning committee or city council before the bylaw is passed, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of city council or, uh, or the local planning appeal tribunal. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting or make written submissions to the city of Babel before the related bylaw is passed, the person or public body may not be added as a party to the hearing of an appeal before the local planning appeal tribunal, unless in the opinion of the tribunal, there are reasonable grounds to add the person or public body as a party. Comments received at this public meeting, as well as written comments, will be considered by the Engineering Development Services Department in analysis of the applications that were part of the public meeting tonight. For further information on how to provide comments to the city regarding an application from this public meeting, please email planning at balville.ca. A recommendation report will be brought forward upon receipt of all agency and public comments in the future. Any persons wishing to be advised of the Bellville Planning Advisory Committee's recommendations with respect to today's applications are requested to provide their name and address as well as the application in which they have an interest in writing to the City of Bellville. And so with that, we'll move on to the public meeting. 3.1, Notice of Complete Application, an introductory public meeting for proposed zoning bylaw amendment bylaw 10-245. 97 Donald Street, City of Balville. Owner is Joshua DeHaan and Jessica Barrett. Agent is Three Hills Engineering and Ken DeHaan. File number is B-77-1149. And um, if someone wants to, uh, yes, Ms. McAdam, could you present the application? Thank you, Councillor Carr. The subject land is located on the southeast corner of Donald Street and Reynolds Crescent, and it is developed with a single detached dwelling and two sheds. The property was recently subject to a consent application, B19-21, which created one new residential lot south of the existing, of the existing dwelling on the property. The rezoning is, uh, application proposes to rezone both the severed and the retained parcels of the subject land from a res residential second density R2 zone to a residential fourth density R4 zone with special provisions. The requested special provisions include to reduce the minimum front required front yard, rear yard, interior side yard, and lot area, and to increase the maximum lot coverage, coverage for the properties. Staff have recognized that further zoning relief would be required for the proposal with respect to the projection provisions of the zoning bylaw for verandas, balconies, and porches inside and rear yards. Staff have not received any public correspondence concerning the application at this, at this time, and the official plan designation of the subject land is residential. And that is all for me. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, we have uh, Curtis Frugenhill and Ken DeHaan to make a presentation. Mr. Frugenhill, you're in the app. Yeah. 
Yes. Ah, hello. There, uh, there I am, and there's Ken. Uh, just to summarize it pretty good. Um, Mr. Brugenhill, looks like your internet's frozen. You may have to disconnect and, and reconnect. We'll certainly allow for that. Oh, there you go. Sorry, you were you were frozen for quite a while there. Oh. <laughs> Did you get my sound? Uh, just as you said hello, and then and then you froze. Oh. You might want to start all over. <laughs> all right, I can do that. Um, so yes, uh, not much more to add other than what Desta said. Uh, yeah, so subject to uh, the consent, we're looking for the rezone. The um, the item. Uh, that's still outstanding, I guess, is the actual road winding to figure out what that would be. Um, and so, but in our review, the location of the house as drawn um, can fit within with the road widening. Um, we would, uh, we could potentially push it further forward uh, and have less front yard setback. And that would uh, push it out to the established building line with the houses that are to the south um, I don't know if, uh, Desta, do you have a severed sketch there that you can share? I'm just, um, I know we, uh, only it shares the, shares the screen during the, oh, okay. the presentations. Okay. And I can't share my screen then. Uh, unfortunately, no, you no, would have had to, that's, that's fine. That's, it's not a big deal. Um, but yeah, so we would be looking potentially to move it forward a little bit, but as it as the property or as the drawing is, uh, the house would fit with the road night widening that would have to happen if it was required. Uh, Ken has talked to the neighbors and no one's uh, objected. Um, as if there's anyone that speaks uh, after me, but uh, that's the gist of it. Okay, thank you for that. Is there any questions from committee members? Uh, Mr. Beltutis. Just curious, if the road widening went through, how close would the edge of the building, the house, be to the road or sidewalk that would be included with the, re the, the, expan the expansion of the road? Like, are we talking a couple of feet or are we talking five or six meters or? Um, the house won't be any closer than the other houses to the south. Um, Reynolds uh, to the south, those houses, it's a reduced uh, road with, I think it's a 15 meter right of way there, um, might even be less. And those houses have a fairly small setback off their property line. And this new dwelling would be, one, well, it can't be closer um if it was the same distance to the road it would be on the property line as it exists now um and so with the road widening and some bit of a setback that house will be further back off the road than all of the current houses along Reynolds. okay well thanks yeah okay thank you any other questions of committee members okay no i don't see any thank you for that I've got no other uh, speakers for that application. Uh, so I got a resolution at the Joshua DeHaan, Jessica Barrett application number B-77-1149 be referred to the regular planning meeting for consideration. Moved by Councillor Feeney, second by Councillor Alsop. All in favor, that's carried, thank you. Uh, 3.2, notice of complete application and introductory public meeting, uh, application for proposed zoning bylaw amendment, bylaw 10-245, 457 Octavia Street, City of Balboa. Owner is Juan Hernandez. Agent is RFA Planning Consultant. File number is B-77-1150. And if that application could be presented, thank you. Thank you, Councilor Carr. 
The subject land uh, is 57 Octavia Street, which is located on the east side of Octavia Street, north of Catherine Street, south of Holloway Street. The property is currently subject to a bylaw enforcement order for not complying with the zoning bylaw and a building and building a structure without a building permit. The application is proposing to rezone the subject property from residential fourth density zone to a residential fourth density zone with special provisions to permit a maximum of 10 vending machines under a covered structure. Special provisions are also requested for the covered structure to permit it in the front yard with a front yard setback of three meters, a zero meter side yard, a maximum width of 2.6 meters, and a maximum area of 26.6 square meters. At the time of writing the report, staff had not received any public comments concerning the application. However, new public comments have been received. These comments will be reviewed and addressed as part of a future staff recommendation report for the application. And the official plan designation of the subject land is residential. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you. And we have uh, Spencer Hutchison uh, making a presentation as well as uh, Juan Hernandez will be part of that presentation. Good afternoon, folks. Thank you for this opportunity to speak for a few minutes. Uh, thanks, thank you to Desta for the introduction and for Thomas for the fuller report on your agenda tonight. Nice to see it's only 970 pages long. <laughs> um, a few opening comments. <clears throat> Before starting the slides in a moment, I'd like to make a, a couple of comments. And, and one seems simple, but what is zoning and why do we have it? And I would suggest it's to essentially eliminate incompatibilities, to make sure things fit together and don't disrupt other things. On tonight's agenda, and in a few moments, you'll be discussing other rather significant developments, which are major uh, infill developments, whether residential or medical center. And yes, uh, compatibility with their neighbors is quite crucial. Um, however, I would, suggest this application is at the other end of the spectrum, much more minor uh, project, um, almost, I would almost argue, a, a home occupation. Um, and so I think what the basic question is, um, do these proposed machines create a significant negative impact on the neighbors or do they provide a service to the local neighborhood? Um, it used to be that corner stores or convenience stores were just that, just around the corner or convenient within walking distances. However, with the trend of bigger multiple um, uh, stores, uh, Circle K and such, corner stores, a lot of them have disappeared by the wayside. Um, in this case, we're not talking about a use that's gonna draw traffic pedestrian traffic, but not vehicle traffic. There's alternatives for anybody who has a car and wants to get convenient food or items. But we're, we're talking basically foot traffic. Um, and I think that's part of uh, preparing a, a complete neighborhood, a walking neighborhood where you can sleep, live, go and grab something if you want, and you don't have to jump in the car and drive blocks away. Um, and I think there is a need for this. I think just by the, the comments of, that have been made so far on page 63 of uh, Thomas's report in your agenda, while they were visiting the site in October, two customers walked up and made use of the vending machine. So um, this is a business of, if it wasn't gonna be successful, it would just die out. Um, so there does seem to be a need in the neighborhood for it. Um, so my last sort of opening comment is, um, I really think this is an application that really needs a site visit and, and a walk around uh, Octavia Street to get a feel for the, the surrounding properties and, and what's on the property. I mean, it's one of those cases where you can actually see the use in, in action right now. Um, so with that, could we, uh, I believe we have eight slides, which we whip right through if we could. 
So thank you very much. Slide one is just an aerial view that shows the property in relationship to Catherine and Octavia. Um, house, single family house with a driveway on the south side. It's a bit of an older photograph, so it doesn't show the, the lean to or the other structures. Uh, next slide, please. So we're just over 450 square meters. It's in the serviced area of Balbo with 16.2 meters of frontage on Octavia. To the south are an older generation of townhouses, medium density with a parking area along the back fence uh, that borders our property. To the north is a converted dwelling with parking across the street, single, ta single detached and semi-detached dwellings. And to the rear, the wooded area in the backyards of Murney Street. So right now, one story dwelling, lean to structure, uh, requesting 10 vending machines, eight on the ground as we speak. Next slide. So a bit of a history, and this is repeating some of Thomas's report. Uh, back in the summer, the owner was notified that he has violations. Um, there was consultation with staff in late August and applications were filed at the end of September. And we submitted a rezoning application and a planning rationale. Um, parallel to this work, an engineering consultant has been engaged to look after the building code review of the existing lean-to structure. However, that work is sort of premature until we come to some conclusion on the location and the use of the building. Um, but just to note that an engineering firm has been retained to meet all the concerns, do drawings, and meet with the building department to address the uh, building aspect of this project. Uh, next page. Thank you. So there's a survey of the property up to date. Uh, along the south property line is this lean-to running uh, quite a length of the south property line. The front part contains the vending machines. The back part is a storage shed and a covered uh, amenity area for the residents of the house. Proposing 10 machines, no employees no outside storage of materials, uh, no signage except what's on the front of the vending machine. Next slide, please. Um, just a quick overview, PPS pol policy statement. It's within a settlement area and that's where growth and development is to be. We're saying that vending machines contribute to an efficient use of land and is appropriate for the available infrastructures, promotes active transportation and provides local access to convenient foods without having to get into a vehicle. Next slide. As, a, as reiterating, reiterating my colleagues, no official plan amendment is necessary or required. It's residential and this type of use would fall under the accessory uses of a residential use. Next slide. And the zoning is currently R4 and we're trying to uh, put forward a zoning that keeps the R4 zone and puts enough restrictions to make everyone comfortable with the use. Um, so 10 machines, uh, we're asking for a, a reduction in the front yard to three meters, a side yard to, to the fence, so zero, um, to permit this structure housing the uh, venue machines. Next slide. So just to wrap up, one residential dwelling, 10 vending machines. Uh, I would suggest it does not change the residential nature of the property. Um, if you look at the pictures on page um, 84 and 88 of your agenda, pictures from the south and the west, um, I don't think this is an uh, inconvenience or any eyesore to the neighbors. And it creates a complete community offering convenient foods within walking distance. And I believe as you'll hear subsequently to my talk from the owner and possibly some neighbors, it is supported by the neighborhood. So at that, I will stop and any questions at this are, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions from the committee to Mr. Hutchison? I don't see any. Um, Mr. Hernandez, uh, you have an opportunity to address the clinic as, or the committee as well, if you like. Yeah. 
You just have to get there. You yes, go. Sir. Uh, yes, hi. Um, well, my only comments uh, would be that I've operated the uh, business for four years now, and and up to date, I haven't had any uh, like complaints from my neighbors. Uh, every one that comes to the machines, uh, they praise me for my services. And some are, like, they like the convenience of the fact that they can come uh, 24 hours a day. Like sometime in the middle of the night, they might run out of, uh, like the babies get up and they want some milk and they don't have any. So they'll run over to my machines. Or the, uh, some elderly would say, you know, they're, they're glad they don't have to walk all the way down Catherine Hill and up again. So, so like I said, it's just something convenient for the neighborhood. And I've, I've never had any complaints and uh, I am not sure what the nature of the complaint was that was submitted. Uh, that is all, thank you. Okay, thank you for those comments. Uh, Councilor Alsop. Thank you. And, and just a question to both Spencer and, and Juan. Um, I, I used to live about 400 meters away from this property, so I've certainly seen it uh, in action, um, seen the uses and, and can confirm the walking traffic and a number of uh, the other points that have been mentioned so far. Uh, one of my chief concerns is the uh, lean-to structure that's currently overhanging the neighbor's property. Um, certainly that is something that uh, we need to take a look at. Has that been discussed uh, between either of you, whether that would be relocated as part of uh, the rezoning so that it's no longer uh, over the line? Um, at this hour, the request is to keep it as shown, but you know, we're beholden to the committee and their judgment and then subsequently council. Um, you know, there are standards for accessory structures. Um, we'd like to keep it there, but um, recognizing that it may be appropriate to have a setback. Um, we also recognize we have to work with the building department and, and spatial separations. Uh, so they may request for building code compliance, either the construction materials or a setback will have to be provided. Um, but as I say, uh, it's a kind of a chicken and egg. We haven't firmed up the structure yet with the consultants in the building department until we have some sort of indication that, you know, the committee and council are, are happy or can, can accept this. So um, very valid points and a question. And one I can't give you a definitive, but we recognize we will have to meet what the building department requires. Great, thank you, sir. Uh, Councillor Feeney. Hello, thank you for your presentation. Um, my question is, you're talking about uh, convenience for milk and different products for people in the community. And, you know, that's not a bad idea, but I'm just asking, what is the, um, or is the milk fresh? Who are you working with? Um, I just wanna make sure that if we approve this, that anything that you, that you are offering is going to be within the health department regulations. I think that's your one. Um, yes, uh, yes. Everything that I sell in my machines, it's everything is prepackaged. I buy at the grocery stores. Uh, I was using the uh, inspector by the uh, health unit, and everything checks out. Uh, like. And I exchange it with the one in the machine. That way, the one in the machine is always fresh. And I keep, uh, I always check the, the expiry dates and make sure everything is good. Okay. You Thank you. The, okay. Thank you. Uh, any other questions from committee members? Uh, Councillor McCaw and then Councillor Sanderson. Thank you. Uh... Chair Carr, uh, just a couple of questions and comments, I guess I would say. Um, I guess the first question I would, I would, I, I'm new, I, I'm not usually on this committee, I'm filling in for Councillor Kelly. So just so I understand what's, what's led up to this. So you visited the city uh, to ask whether uh, what you're proposing was, was something you could do, is that correct? Um, yes, when I first uh, started, when I first 
especially by my first team, like I did go to City Hall and I asked if I needed a permit. And uh, I went to the first floor, they didn't know anything, so they sent me to the second floor. And there I was told that I did not need a permit uh, to set up a vending machine outside for the paper tools. So that's how I started all this all. And then uh, two years later, I, it, it, the business had grown, so I went back and asked again. And again, I was told no, but I was informed that I, I, I was violating you know, city bylaws. And, but as, as there had not been any complaints, uh, I was not told to shut down. And then the complaint, just after the complaint I got in the summertime, uh, I just said that there was a complaint made and that, that's all that, that I was told. Just a second here. And Councillor Mackay, your signals. Uh, okay. So, oh, just a little Councillor Mackay, I would suggest you. Uh, oh. Councillor Mackay, can you shut your audio off or sorry, your video? Okay, so just you were informed that currently the guest the Councilor McCoy, Pardon, I can't hear. Sorry, Councilor. Councilor McCoy, your your audio is is breaking up terribly. Um, I'm wondering if you should uh, try phoning in. You want to try can again? Yep. Yeah, can you hear me now, Councillor Carr? Uh, yeah, I can right now. We'll see how this goes. Okay, I switched internet, so maybe that this will help. So, sorry about that. Uh, just, just so I understand, you visited our uh, our city hall. You were told that this was non-compliant with our bylaw, but you proceeded to do it anyway, provided an understanding that. It would continue unless someone complained. Is that correct? Is that a correct statement? Yes. Okay. If I, one further comment, if I might. Um, is it not true that there's a case or four blocks or so on um, AC March near your property? So, um, just a question. Is it not case? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question properly. I, I, think, well, I, I think what I deciphered through that was uh, uh, a variety uh, store within proximity of your location. That's correct. I would estimate four blocks, Councillor Carr. I was just asking, um, you know, he was aware um, of that location. There's a. The same, not all are more. Mr. Hernandez, I believe she was asking whether there were uh, where the variety stores yes. are in proximity to your location. Uh, there's a there's a uh, convenience store. It was uh, super duper on the Coleman and and Water Street. And Daisy Marks uh, on Yeoman and Bridge Street. Uh, and there's a uh, Mr. Convenience on uh, across the courthouse. Now, there, ha there are been cases where uh, stores have been like uh, close to each other, like the two Mr. Convenience and the former uh, Super Duper were across from each other. So I don't see how proximity is an issue. So I guess if I might, Councillor Carr, just to finish uh, for now, uh, what I might say is, you know, there's been great discussion about the service that you're offering in a residential zone. Um, yet the Daisy Mart is about four, maybe four blocks away from your property, 
which is operating in a commercial zone as it should. And I guess the concern I have with this is um, they're following the they're following the rules. They're they're in a properly zoned uh, premise, you know. And, and I have concerns that if this is something that moves forward, we can expect this in every quadrant of the city. We can expect every neighborhood to, to be able to do the same. So th this is the, the concern that I have, and I and I just wanted to uh, you know ask you if you were aware of the Daisy yeah. Mark four blocks away. Thank you. Yes, I, yes I'm aware. Uh, but with the, the special provision that we're asking, not everybody will be uh, able to open up, set up the same thing I have without going through this process, right? Or having to rezone the property as a, you know, commercial, like get a pro, special provision for it, which is, it's not something that any, just any ordinary joke can afford, but even myself, I'm like going broke going through this process. Like uh, I work a full time job and uh, I'm barely making it through. So, and um, the convenience of my place is like it's open 24 hours a day. So, the, the convenience stores are around my area, they close by 11 o'clock. So, people like the convenience that they can get up in the middle of the night if they, if they need to and run over to my machines. Thank you. Okay, uh, Councillor Sanderson. Uh, thank you through the chair. So the audio from uh, from both Councillor McCaw and uh, Mr. Hernandez is uh, sufficiently poor that I, I, I had trouble following some of what they said and some of what they discussed. However, I'll, uh, I'll limit my questions just to a couple. Uh, I thought I heard Councillor McCaw ask Mr. Hernandez if uh, four years ago, uh, when he made the decision to start this illegal business on Octavia Street, that he had gone to City Hall and asked about bylaw, and he was told that he couldn't do it. And then he said he went ahead and did it anyway. Did I hear no, that correctly? No. Uh, when I went to City Hall... Okay, so that's, that's fine. A, a no answer is sufficient. Okay. So my question is, how, how long have you been operating this illegal business? Four no, years? Really? Four years, and from, the, the, from the start, okay. I was told I did not need a permit. Thank you, thank you. My next question is for uh, Mr. Hutchison. Uh, the uh, the memo that you forwarded to Ms. McAdam said that you were retained by Mr. Hernandez. Uh, I'd like to know when you were retained. Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, let me step back. As, as a planner of 30 years just, and just the date just the date is all I'm looking for mr Hutchison well I was just going to put your your questions into context I just need a date earlier this year so you don't have a date I believe if you look in the PowerPoint presentation I just made and let me flip to the um, the timeline. Okay, so while you're looking that up, I'll ask my last question of Mr. Hernandez. What, what is your annual sales revenue from your operation? Uh, revenue, it's, uh, uh, it's different every time. Uh, I would say roughly around 20,000 20, a year. Like that, like that uh, profit. Once. So did, did you hear that, uh, Chair Carr? Uh, yes, he's, I believe he said 20,000. 20,000, thank you. Okay, back to you, Mr. Hutchison. If you have a date, that would be helpful. I'm just, I'm only asking these questions because I want to put a timeline together on it. That's all. Yep. Uh, I'm just looking up the uh, form that he signed to retain us. Um, one second. I'm going to say July 27th, we were re retained. Thank you. That's it for me. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, I saw Councillor Feeney's hand. 
I was just asking in terms of the revenue, was that 20,000 gross or 20,000 net? And uh, does he have any kind of estimate about how many people come to the place after hours? Because some of the complaints that we've been receiving is the fact that it is uh, for the neighbors, a bit of a difficulty. Uh, the income, that's uh, net income, 20,000. Uh, uh, roughly during the night, uh, some nights there's none. The most there'll be like maybe um, under 10 people throughout the night. So maybe once every one an hour. Like uh, last night I had only like two people. Well, my comment was about the fact that you're offering a service that's 24 seven and there are other uh, convenience stores in your area. So if you're serving a great deal of people over you know, the hours where the other stores in the area are not operating, that would be valuable information, but it's hard to gauge. And again, I'm, you know, I think that uh, we need to look at that. Well, it would be just the people that are in the, in the, living here on the street. And, uh, so like, yeah, it's now, not a lot of people come over night, less than 10 people during the night. And may, maybe it's somebody that, because of all these uh, publicity people have forgot about my place. So now if they need something and, and things are closed at nighttime, they might drive here. But, uh, I rarely see people drive over here. But my point is, you're saying that, you know, you're one of the values that you offer in the community. And again, I'm not, you know, trying to be difficult. The, what you're offering is the fact that convenience stores have closed. And uh, I'm just trying to get an idea of how many people that you actually offer the services to when other stores in the area are not open. I believe he's answered that, Mr. Hernandez. You said approximately 10 uh, after hours. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, any other questions? Uh, Ms. Brown. Um, my question is um, for Mr. Hutchison, but likely will be referred to DESTA as well. Um, Mr. Hutchinson, you suggested, thank you for your presentation. You suggested that there was, it, there was still a question as to whether or not the vending machines would remain um, on the side yard parallel to the neighbor's driveway. Um, but my understanding from reading the material is that the vending machines actually would be relocated to the front of the property. And I just need clarification on whether it's across the front or will remain down the side? Um, I guess it's terminology. The, the request is to keep them in the current location, which is in front of the house. So um, they're on the side yard facing north along the fence line and no closer to the street than the end unit is at this hour. Does that answer your question? Yes. Thank you. Are you good, Ms. Brown? Yes, thank you. Uh, Councillor McCaw, I saw your hand again. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to reframe this question because I'm unsure of some dates. So let me just think it a bit more and maybe later on in the, in the next meeting, I, think I might bring it up. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Okay. Thank you for that presentation and comments. Um, next, we have uh, Patty Sign speaking in favor of the application. Ms. Sign, you, you're in the meeting. If you can, have you hear me? I can. If you have a camera, you're welcome to activate that as well. And um, I'm not sure I know how. So. That's fine. Audio is better anyway, so we can uh, get your comment. So you have the floor. 
Okay, perfect. Um, I just want to say I live two blocks away from one. I walk the neighborhood, <clears throat> excuse me, I walk the neighborhood two, three, four times a day with my dog. Um, I walk by his house almost every time. Um, I see people going in there all. Usually I always see foot traffic. I don't think I've ever seen a car stop and go in there. People walk in, they look at the machines, they get what they want, they leave. I have never heard disturbances. Um, I can say I've heard disturbances in many other houses in the neighborhood. Um, I also wanted to bring up, I know there was talk about people saying he, his vending machines bring in drug addicts to the neighborhood. It's not his vending machines that bring the drug addicts in. <laughs> it's the other houses that sell what they were looking for. Um, so, and my grandson and I walk up there all the time. We get a little treat and we come home. I don't think there's any problem with his house. And I don't think that it really disturbs anybody in the neighborhood at all. And that's all I wanted to say. Okay, thank you. Um, just, uh, I'll ask if there's any questions from committee members. No, I don't see any. Thank you for your comments. Uh, next I have listed is Dagmar Makilla speaking uh, in opposition of the application. Hello. Hi there. You're Hi. connected and uh, you have the floor. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, I'm actually the picture that was shown in the diagrams there is incorrect. Where you see that wooded area is actually my property that adjoins uh, Juan's property, okay? And um, so I have written a letter which I questioned if there would be 24 seven access to these machines. Um, and also um, supervision. What supervision is there going to be on the property? And will there be 24 seven security supervision by whom and to whose expense, the taxpayer or by Juan, okay? And who do we contact at the city in case of an emergency happening? Um, at the rear of the property, there has been a seating assembled area built there and is this going to be allowed to be accessed by the public would be my question. Uh, and is there parking available for this, even though they say it's basically uh, walk-in traffic? Um, I'm questioning that. And then what products would be allowed to be sold in these vending machines? Because as we all know, like the cans of pop and whatever can be added to drinks to be mixed up, you know what I mean? And then another issue that has come to my attention tonight is lighting. Now, what kind of lighting would have to be supplied and will that interfere with what I see in my backyard there? Okay, do I have 24 seven lighting going on? Already there's one of his tenants that has their lights on 24 seven. Okay, how much more lighting are we going to have to put up with? So these are questions that I have. Okay, well, thank you for that. And I notice uh, staff are making notes and at this point it's a introductory uh, meeting and staff will right. analyze all these concerns. So um, I'll open it up to the committee. Do you, does the committee have any questions? Uh, Councillor Feeney. Thank you for coming forward, Digmar. Uh, obviously, this is of concern to you. Uh, do you fear, like, the, are there any safety issues or uh, people using the machines that give you concern or not? Well, I think there could potentially be safety issues given some of the people in this area, okay? Um, and so, yeah, this is why I'm like, to me, most businesses are open between whatever, whether it's seven, eight in the morning to five or 10 at night, whatever. They're not 24 seven. And so a safety issue would be for me that I'd have to be on concern 
about my property 24 seven. Okay. Well, I was just, I was asking for, was there any current issues, not speculation, but thank you very much. Okay. Any other questions from community members? No. Okay. Thank you for your comments and staff will uh, certainly review those as part of the application review. And I don't have any other participants. Uh, so I have a resolution that the Juan Hernandez application number B-77-1150 be referred to the regular planning meeting for consideration. Moved by Councillor Alsop, seconded by Councillor Feeney. All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Uh, I need a motion to adjourn this portion of the meeting. Councillor Feeney, Councillor Alsop, all in favor? That's carried. All right, moving on to the Planning Advisory Committee. Uh, attendance wise, again, Councillor Kelly's absent. Councillor McCall is filling in. Uh, disclosure of pecuniary interests and general nature thereof. Uh, Councillor McCaw, you've noted 7.2. Yes? Yes, I had a 6.1 written down here. Is that associated with that? Uh, no, 6.1 is uh, 97 Donald Street. Oh, sorry. Okay. Just, just, just 7.2. Yep. Just 7.2. Okay. Um, no other disclosure of pecuniary interest. Okay. Reading and confirmation of the minutes. Uh, that the minutes of the City Council Planning Committee meeting and Planning Advisory Committee meeting on October 4th, 2021 uh, be approved. Moved by Mr. Baltuga, seconded by Mr. Joyce. All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. There's no deputation. Uh, correspondence. Could I have a motion that all correspondence received in the clerk's office be received? Councillor Alsop and Mr. Jennings, all in favor? That's carried, thank you. Okay, referrals from the public meeting, 6.1, notice of complete application, introductory public meeting for proposed zoning bylaw amendment, bylaw 10 97 Donald Street, City of Bowell, owners Joshua DeHaan and Jessica Barrett, agent is Three Hills Engineering and Ken DeHaan, file number is B-77-1149. Resolution reads that report number PP-2021-59, dated November 1st, 2021, regarding the notice of complete application and introductory public meeting for proposed amendment to zoning bylaw number 10245 is amended, 97 Donald Street, City of Belleville, County of Hastings be received as information and that staff report back at such time as input from the public, commenting agencies and municipal departments has been received, assessed and addressed to the satisfaction of the Engineering Development Services Department. Can somebody move that please? Councillor Sanderson, seconded by Ms. Brown. Uh, any questions or comments on this one? Seeing none, all in favor? That's carried, thank you. 6.2, notice of complete application and introductory public meeting, application for proposed zoning bylaw amendment, bylaw 10245 for 57 Octavia Street, City of Babel. Owners Juan Hernandez, agent is RFA Planning Consultant Incorporated. File number is B-77-1150. Uh, B Resolution reads that report number PP-2021-60 dated November 1st, 2021 regarding notice of complete application and introductory public meeting for proposed zoning bylaw amendment, bylaw 10245 for 57 Octavia Street, City of Bell will be received as information and that staff report back at such time as input from the public, commenting agencies and municipal departments has been received, assessed and addressed to the satisfaction of the engineering and development services department. Somebody move that, Councillor Alsop, seconded by Councillor Feeney. Uh, any other questions or comments on this one? Ms. Brown. Uh, thank you, Councillor Carr. Um, can we just confirm that if within another residential area, somebody concluded that they wanted to set up a similar kind of business, that each would have to be dealt with individually um, concerning the zoning? impacts sure could i have a staff member uh that oh yeah. uh, thomas can uh uh he, since he's the planning planner on file he'll um uh he can answer that thanks Tessa. uh through the chair uh yes the any property that wants to do home occupation needs to follow the 
uh, zoning bylaws provisions for home occupations, which set out a number of provisions. Uh, any variance to that uh, requires a planning application. And, and just if I may, a follow on question to Mr. Deming for the chair. Um, this wouldn't be considered precedent setting? Uh, through the chair. When we look at rezonings like this, this is, um, this is really why we have this uh, format to go through the process, to look at it at an individual process. Uh, this amendment won't, uh, won't change the home occupations for the rest of the municipality. Um, it, it could theoretically set that in, in some minds, but we review everything based off of our official plan policies, uh, which aren't changing through this application. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Joyce. Yeah, just just continuing on from um, Ms. Brown, the uh, so things like uh, small engine repair businesses that ha operate out of people's homes or people that do baking <clears throat> and advertise and that, so they would all fall under the same rules of permitting and 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 zoning. Is that is that your understanding, uh, Mr. Demi? Uh, through the chair, uh, yes, that that's correct. Um, now, for example, our, our Thurlow area uh, has slightly different zoning provisions, uh, being a rural area. Uh, for example, it allows accessory structures to be used, uh, and that's where you might see the small engine repair. Uh, within the city's uh, Belleville zoning bylaw, currently home occupations are limited to within the dwelling only. Okay, so if they if they're operating baking operation as long as it's within the building it's not accessory buildings or storage or whatever then they can do it within the building assuming they follow everything else yes that's okay. correct okay uh, if i could ask a follow-up not on that but uh he's been um gentleman's been operating for four years or thereabouts um ignoring the fact that you know he did it under uh inappropriate uh, permitting and zoning in that has there been significant uh, issues or problems during this period of time? I'm not sure I heard that or not. I know the question was asked in one context, but has there been issues? Uh, if you kind of ignore the fact that he should have ceased and desist during the um, uh, the permitting and, and that side of it, has there been problems? I'm not sure I heard an answer to that. So I'm not sure who can answer that, uh, whether it's through the chair of the Desta or whoever. Uh, through the chair, I. From my understanding and, and my review of the uh, the initial complaint that came in with bylaw, this was the first uh, complaint our bylaw enforcement officers have received for this one. Um, but again, I you know the, things go on complain, but that as far as I'm, I'm aware, that is the only complaint that we've had so far. Okay. Okay. Thank you, uh, Councillor Sanderson. I saw your hand. Uh, thank you, through the chair. I was going to touch on on a similar point, and and I uh, I I think that uh, regardless of uh, what we're saying about treating or looking at each app, app each application individually, I once we or if we approve is is maybe a better way to say it. If we approve this, then there's nothing to stop anybody else from doing exactly the same thing, setting up an identical operation. And if we were to deny, let's say, uh, uh, well, pick on the chair. So let's say one of your neighbors on, on Bird Crescent wanted to set up this operation and, and we were to deny them, then they would just go to the tribunal and use this case to support setting up shop uh, on their residence. And I just don't see that we would have an argument to counter it. So I think we are opening up if we approve this application, and I know the report has yet to come back to us. I, I think we're opening ourselves up to uh, uh, a proliferation of this type of activity in, in the uh, earmarked residential areas. And, uh, and uh, so I'm a little uh, reluctant on this one. I certainly want to hear more from uh, from uh, you know the public in terms of public input and comments, uh, but certainly the uh, abutting neighbor uh, carries more weight for me than uh, than the presentation that we heard from Mitch Mr. Hutchison, which I think basically took the uh, 
the planning cycle and the planning documents and just uh, sort of twisted it into a pretzel so that this application made sense. And uh, Cyrus, thank you for that. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Let's keep in mind though that the, the resolution here is to refer this to staff. Staff are gonna address it further and then it will uh, come back with a recommendation, but certainly those comments are, are things that staff will have to consider. Uh, Councillor McCaw, did I see your hand as well? Yes, I was just, you know, sort of, I, I would agree with Councillor Sanderson, but when I heard Mr. Danning, uh, you had said that uh, for a home occupation, it must be thin, the, within the, the actual structure. This wouldn't constitute the actual structure, would it? The chair, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, it was hard to hear the, the full question. Did you ask if this would constitute an accessory structure? Well, I, I guess I was going to, I heard you say earlier, and I think I read it in a report earlier. I, did, I just had a quick chance to glance at it because I was just filling in for Councillor Kelly that a home occupation must be within the, the residence or the, the structure. Is that what I heard you say? It must be within the structure to be a home occupation? Yes, with under uh, zoning bylaw 10245, which is the Belleville area, uh, a home occupation must be within inside the dwelling uh, and they're not permitted within any accessory structures. Uh, this uh, lean to, as it's described, is an accessory structure. So the only way this could become compliant as a, for, this is my question, and I could be wrong. Um, to me, what I'm understanding you say that unless these, these uh, vending machines were located inside of his home, they would be non-compliant. Is that what I, I just, I'm taking that, from what you're saying. Yes, th those are a number of the issues. Uh, there's There was issues initially with signage as well, uh, which is also not permitted for home occupations. Um, and then the location of the accessory structure being within this uh, side yard and the required front yard. Uh, the home occupation, the actual sale uh, of the area, uh, the home occupation provisions are required to be within the dwelling. Uh, it does limit it to uh, a number of other provisions, such as 10% of the dwelling's floor area. Uh, so it, to be in compliance with the current zoning provisions, uh, there would be a number of changes that would have to happen. Thank you. And just, just to comment to that, I, I as Councillor Sanderson, believe that if this were ever to be approved, I think this is one slippery slope that there'd be no returning. So uh, that's how I feel about it. And I think that uh, Mr. Deming's uh, uh, description to me uh, basically gives me a clear understanding that I, I don't, just don't see compliance here in any way, even moving forward. Thank you. So if I could, um... What Mr. Deming has described is, is what's required under the current zoning. And this is why the application is here, is to look for uh, amendments from that to allow the accessory use versus in his home and uh, some of those other uh, anomalies that are that are outstanding at this time. So, uh, Councillor Feeney, I saw your hand. I was just going to uh, say that I am in concurrence with Councillor McCaw and Councillor Sanderson, and, and just asking uh, staff to, again, we don't want to be in a slippery slope, but again, they do a great job. So when they come back with the recommendations, I look forward to that. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments on this one? Uh, seeing none, all in favor? It's carried. Okay, moving on to uh, reports, uh, 7.1 staff recommendation report for proposed zoning bylaw amendment bylaw 10 245, 421 Dundas Street West, City of Belleville. Owner is 
Orbitorium Park and Wellness Center. Uh, applicant is Echo View Consulting Services Incorporated. File number is B-77-1132. Resolution is that the Planning Advisory Committee recommends the following to City Council. That zoning bylaw number 10245 as amended be amended by rezoning 421 Dundas Street West City of Belleville from residential first density R1 zone to residential seventh density R7-14 zone with special provisions to permit the development of a four story with a stepped back fifth story 30 unit condominium apartment building with a maximum height of 15.68 meters. I get somebody to move that please. Councillor Allsop, seconded by Councillor Sanderson. Uh, any questions or comments on this application? Seeing none, all in favor? That motion is carried. Uh, 7.2, Councillor McCaws declared a pecuniary interest. Uh, staff recommendation rep report for proposed official plan and zoning bylaw amendment bylaw 10 for the northern portion of 40 Yeoman Street, known as Ben Bleeker property, owner of City of Babel, agent is Dylan Consulting Limited. File numbers are B 50 3 38 and B 77 1144. Resolution is that pursuant to the planning uh, report PP 2021, the Planning Advisory Committee recommends the following to City Council. The Bowel's official plan be amended by amending by as amended, be amended by redesignating the northern portion of 40 Yeoman Street from community facility land use to residential land use and incorporating text amendments to permit the proposed residential development consisting of one apartment building containing 100 units, 37 townhouse dwelling units, and an outdoor amenity space. Uh, this official plan amendment be incorporated into the new official plan and that zoning bylaw number 10245 is amended be amended by rezoning the northern portion of 40 Yeoman Street from community facility CF zone to residential 8th density RX R8-X zone with special provisions for relief to building and yard setbacks, maximum height, parking requirements, and parking location provisions, and that a holding H symbol be applied to the zoning to require site plan approval, as well as completion of the necessary supporting documents to the city satisfaction prior to the development of the subject land. Yeah, somebody move that please, Mr. Beltutis and Mr. Joyce. Uh, any comments on this one? Seeing none, all in favor? Motion is carried. And Councillor McCaw can rejoin us. 7.3 is a staff recommendation report for proposed zoning bylaw amendment, bylaw 3014. 80 Millennium Parkway, City of Belleville, owners Knudsen Construction, agent is Ainley Group, file number is B-77-1147, and the resolution is the Planning Advisory Committee recommends the following to City Council. That zoning bylaw number 3014 as amended, be amended to authorize by rezoning the subject land known as 80 Millennium Parkway from Service Industrial uh, SI-5-H zone to a new service industrial SI-XX zone category with special provisions that carry over the special provisions of the SI-5 zone and add clinic as a permitted use. Moved by Councillor Sanderson, seconded by Councillor Alsop. Any questions or comments on this one? All in favor? That's carried. Uh, 7.4, recommendation report to adopt a new official plan for the City of Belleville. Resolution is that the Planning Advisory Committee recommends the following to City Council, that pursuant to report PP-2021-64, City of Babel, new official plan, a bylaw be prepared for Council's consideration to approve and adopt the City of Babel's new official plan, and the City of Babel's new official plan be submitted to the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing for final approval. Moved by Ms. Brown, seconded by Mr. Beltutis. Uh, any questions or comments on this one? Councillor Sanderson. Uh, thank you, through the chair. Uh, I'm not sure who's who's best to answer this question, but uh, just before the meeting, about an hour before the meeting, we received uh, some additional correspondence. And uh, uh, I'm just wondering how will the process uh, accommodate that input to the official plan? 
Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I can answer that question. So we have received two additional pieces of, of correspondence in terms of uh, written comments regarding the official plan. Uh, I um, am reviewing the comments and, and will uh, do my best to, uh, to answer any questions that have, that have arisen. Staff are not recommending any further changes at this uh, point in time to the proposed uh, official plan, uh, which is reflected in the final draft of the report. There was a, um, a public commenting period uh, for the draft official plan that was initiated when the draft was published on the city's website. So that was back in September of 2020. Uh, following the, the uh, publication of the, the draft official plan on the city's website, uh, we organized a virtual public information center that was held on November 30th of 2020. And we also uh, convened a public meeting uh, through, uh, through PAC uh, to receive public comments at that time. And that was at December 7th, uh, 2020. So we also had a form available on the city's website where people or individuals or interested parties could provide comments. Uh, so staff are satisfied that there was an adequate uh, period of time where the public were able to submit comments regarding the proposed draft official plan. Uh, with respect to the further correspondence, I will um, do our best to answer any questions that have uh, arisen through those comments. Okay, maybe, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe just one additional question if I can for Ms. McAdam. So in the process of the official plan update, we did a land swap and we uh, added uh, industrial land uh, to the Northeast corner. And we accommodated that by, uh, I think the words that were in the document were employable land or employment land, uh, basically uh, north of the 401. And so I'm just wondering what, what was the rationale to redesignate the industrial land north of the 401 and classify it as agricultural? versus leaving it as uh, uh, industrial or changing it to commercial? Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I'll, I'll um, answer the first part of that question. So uh, the, the, when the new official plan, um, or sorry, as part of the official plan review process, there's a technical requirement to complete a a municipal comprehensive review. So that's the technical exercise behind supporting an, a new official plan. And then as part of that um, municipal comprehensive review or MCR for short, it evaluates the city's land needs within the urban serviced areas and then provides policy recommendations with respect to residential lands, commercial lands and employment lands. Um, that's a very brief summary of, of the MCR, but that's in a nutshell what it is. So as part of the uh, recommendations with respect to the employment, the employment lands, and as part of the city's terms of reference for the MCR, uh, it was requested that the MCR review the possibility of expanding the urban boundary to facilitate the expansion of the Northeast Industrial Park, um, which would be additional employment lands added to the urban service area. So added to um, our urban area or the settlement area. Uh, so the MCR considered that and um, it considered the, the fact that those lands were readily, more readily serviceable and could support the economic development for the city. But to add new lands into the urban boundaries, at, at least the same amount of lands need to be removed from the urban boundary. Um, the MCR also uh, found that the city had enough employment lands already within its urban boundary. Uh, so therefore lands um, needed to be removed through this industrial land swap to um, meet, meet the provincial policy statement requirements when it comes to expanding an urban boundary. So the MCR found that the lands north of the 401, which are, um, you know, uh, more readily referred to as the Canifton industrial area lands um, were not readily, readily serviceable and should be removed from, from the urban boundary. So that was, I think about 276 hectares of land. 
as part of the public consultation process uh, um, through the development of the MCR, there was concern with respect to the MCR's recommendations of the removal of a significant amount of land north of the north of the 401 in the Canafton industrial area. So uh, staff made a recommendation that instead of the removal of 276 hectares of industrial land, we could recommend to only remove the same amount of land that is being proposed to be added to the urban boundary as part of the Northeast Industrial Park expansion. So a true swap in terms of land area. Um, that would be to, uh, um, to maintain consistency with the, the provincial policy statement, which says you cannot add more lands to the urban boundary than what you're removing. So we mo moved forward with that recommendation. And um, uh, so when we submitted, and then with the lands that we proposed in the Canopton industrial area to remain within the urban boundary, we proposed a new land use designation, um, namely deferred growth area uh, land use designation. Um, and this was an attempt to address some uh, historical land use compatibility concerns with respect to rural residential development and the intention, the future intent on those lands for its future employment development. So um, when we submitted the, the uh, uh, draft official plan to the ministry, the ministry came back with concerns regarding um, that the draft official plan was not necessarily conforming with the findings of the 2018 Municipal Comprehensive Review, which proposed a larger removal of lands in that area. So uh, basically the city is proposed to remove the minimum amount of lands from the urban boundary to ensure consistency with the PPS. So the PPS does require something needs to go in order for the, the urban boundary to expand for the, to facilitate the expansion of the Northeast Industrial Park. Um, to address the concerns from the ministry with respect to retaining um, more lands within the Canopton industrial area than what the, the MCR recommended and to address their concerns with the, the land use designation of deferred growth area. We've revised the designation of that area for the final draft of the official plan and we've revised it to be named strategic employment area. And essentially what this land use designation does is it states consistency with the PPS um, and it acknowledges that these lands um, are not intended for development within this planning horizon. Uh, however, the future use of these lands are for employment lands. I hope that helps answer the question, but if I've missed anything, um, please let me know. No, thank you. Thank you very much. That was a, a very detailed and uh, and uh, very much appreciated. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Feeney. I appreciate your explanation. And but what I understand is that the city doesn't currently own the lands that uh, others own. And through this plan, I'm not you know, doing anything of it against the plan, but it's their land. And we're just going to say, well, fine, then <laughs> you can't use it for this. We, because of our plan and because of the municipal, you know, the government and everything else, we're just going to say, well, sorry, too bad, so sad. What you thought was agricultural, what you thought was commercial, well, we're dictating. And I think, I understand. We have a plan and we need to follow through, but we also have to have a sensitivity of the people that actually own the lands that we are making the decisions for. And that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Does the staff want to comment on that or you don't have to? Um, I, I, um, uh, that's certainly received and, and uh, staff have worked with the, um, uh, with uh, one of the interested landowners and have attempted to uh, address address the situation. And one of the ways that we, what we have done is that we've recommended the uh, addition of, a, of a, a rural employment reserve policy within the rural land use designation. Uh, this, would, um, this would be over a portion of the lands that are proposed to be outside of the urban boundary, but to recognize their 
um, their potential for future employment lands in the future. Uh, so that is something that, that we've done in working um, to attempt to address the landowner concerns while also uh, working under the, um, the council approved terms of reference for, for the municipal comprehensive re review to consider the land swap. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments? Okay, I don't see any. Well, I just have a couple. I want to say, first of all, thank you to staff for, for this undertaking um, and certainly uh, Dylan Consulting as well for providing uh, some of the background on this. This is uh, uh, a laborious process to go through. And uh, in addition to all the consultation, just a lot of the background work that's required. Um, I actually was on council uh, 20 some years ago when the official plan was first developed and and to see it now evolve where it is today and again it's um it's it's uh to allow for projected growth and development but it's also subject to regular reviews um and so with that as our community continues to grow then we'll have to recalibrate uh as, as such the other thing that uh you know gets frustrating certainly is is that we're beholden to the province so even though at the end of the day, we want to uh, grow our community a certain way, uh, we are still beholden to the Ontario government and to comply with the provincial policy statements and things of that effect. And, and that certainly has impacted uh, that one particular land area north of the 401 that, that's been talked about tonight. And the reality is though, is, is that as our city continues to grow, particularly in the industrial area, we need to have service land available so that when businesses come to our city looking to invest we're ready to go and uh, with the the servicing that we do have in play already it is a lot easier to extend existing service than it is to put new service into an area that is completely unserviced and uh, so as we look to the north in the 401 certainly that will be an area that will be subject to uh, review and further uh, studies as we go along and will likely at some point definitely become an area that may in fact become industrial or certainly commercial to a certain degree. The other thing that uh, has been talked about uh, 20 some years ago on my first round was the East Arterial and, uh, and uh, exit and entrance on the 401. And right now that is still being talked about uh, at the elected official level but it hasn't hit the bureaucracy enough that there is actually a drawing that says that the MTO wants to put that extension and that uh, exchange there. That is going to be a, a big factor and certainly provide momentum as to what occurs with the lands both north and south of that interchange. And so uh, that will certainly provide some momentum for the future. Uh, but in the interim, we uh, certainly as a municipality need to make sure that we have serviced industrial land to, uh, ready to go today uh, for the investors that are knocking on our door today. So uh, again, I, I think that we, we have good promise in the future as to what uh, land north of the 401 may hold, um, but we got to be concerned about the immediate horizon. And again, thank you to staff for all the work that you've done on this. This is a big endeavor uh, for engineering development services and particularly the planning section. So uh, thank you for that. So with that, I've got a mover and a seconder. Uh, all in favor? That's carried, thank you. Uh, moving on to information matters, official plan and zoning bylaw amendment monitoring report to November 1st, 2021. Uh, resolution of the official plan and zoning bylaw amendment monitoring report to November 1st, 21, 2021 be received. Uh, Councillor Alsop, uh, Mr. Baltudis, uh, any questions on that information? Seeing none, all in favor? That's carried. Uh, general business. Does anybody have anything under general business? I do have one thing. Um, just as part of our zoning bylaw review, I would ask staff if they could consider uh, developing some guidelines for tiny homes. Uh, we have had comments about that in the future. And uh, I think it would be a good idea to see if we could include that in our, our zoning uh, bylaw review. And I'll just leave that with staff. Uh, Councillor Alsop. Yes, uh, I just want to, to concur with you. I think it's a great idea. And uh, I have had some conversations with the building department about it. And I think they do have some, 
some numbers in terms of square footage that would be uh, compliant with a regular residential lot. So I do look forward to that coming back as well. And, and thank you for, for bringing that forward. Okay, thank you. Um, nothing else for general business. Then I just got some closing remarks. The Planning Advisory Committee's applicable decisions will be forwarded to the City Council for consideration forming part of the agenda for, agenda for the City Council meeting to be held. And with that, I need a motion to adjourn. Mr. Baltudis and uh, Mr. Jennings, all in favor.